Going to a garage sale is a great way to get electronics at a cheap rate, but how do you know it's a good deal? Let's find out. Going to garage sales are a great opportunity to pick up electronics on the cheap. Um, sometimes you will luck out and get a 500 gigabyte hard drive for like $20, $25. Um, some monitors under $100. Um, in this case, this weekend, I had uh, was able to get a Linksys E1000 router uh, for only $15. Now, the question becomes, is this a good deal, right? And um, when, you're, when it comes to electronics, there's predominantly two things you need to look at. Inevitably, the price is gonna be the first thing, right? Uh, you wanna make sure that for any used device that you're not getting swindled, um, there's no use in paying um, $100 for a device when it really only values at $10, just throwing some numbers out there. But the other thing, which arguably is more important in my opinion, is whether or not the manufacturer still supports the device and the sense of providing security updates. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this Cisco E1000 router. Um, I actually purchased it for $15, the going rate for the or the initial rate was actually 45 so i was able to bargain this one uh, down a bit uh, after speaking to them so google's always your friend when it comes to searching for devices and uh, electronic devices and kind of getting a gauge of whether or not it is a, a good deal so um i would just go ahead and put in the linksys e1000 and just kind of take a look and see where it's being sold at. It's kind of get a gauge of how much it is. So um, you see Best Buy selling, uh, it looks like it's a different router. It doesn't look like it's the same one, but we have a post Poshmark at $12 here. We have Linksys at $19.99. So from a pricing perspective, it looks like I did a pretty good job at, at, at getting this to the right price. Um, I seriously doubt that had it not been for the garage sale that this probably would not have sold or the uh, the seller would have probably lost money shipping it out to someone else. So I'm good with that piece of it. But now we need to go ahead and look and see if the manufacturer still supports this particular device. Um, so in this case here, we want to go ahead and see if there's a quick link to the E1000. Um, it looks like there's a support article here from Linksys. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and see where that takes me. And um, I want to see if there is anything called an end of life support. So I'm gonna just do a control F and put end of, and there's nothing there. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna go ahead and click on support here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put E1000 on here and see if it gives me any information on it. I'm pressing enter. Oh, there it goes. And there it is, the wireless, the uh, wireless end router right there. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. Okay. And we want to scroll down to downloads because that's predominantly where the firmware resides. There's a download software here, firmware. And our version of the router is the 4.21 you can see that information it's going to always be on the back of the router itself so in this case here i'm going to go ahead and truncate the 2.1 and it looks like the last time this uh, was updated was in 2014 so this is definitely an indication that the end of life support for this one is already ended by the manufacturer um, and what that essentially means is that if I plug this thing into the network itself, there's probably some vulnerabilities that can be exploited, um, by putting this in the net, in my network. Um, and that is a, it's a risk that I don't want to take. So does that mean that this is a bad deal? 
Not necessarily. When it comes to routers in particular, um, there are some open source tools that are available um, that do provide updated firmware for devices like this. So in this case, we're going to go to a website called WW. DRT. I probably did that wrong. DR no, I got it right. WWDRT. Just Google's our friend, so we're just going to put that in there. And it's a Linux-based firmware for wireless routers and access points. So essentially, it's instead of using Cisco's or Linksys's firmware, we're just going to flash this device here, and um, if they have uh, the firmware here. So let's go ahead and see if they do we're going to go ahead and click on ddwrt a lot of great information here since this is open source um, it's going to be completely free to use um, but they do accept donations so give them uh, some support if you decide to go this route so i'm going to go ahead and click on router database and uh, looks like we got a little bit of a an ad here which is kind of uh, something i'm not accustomed to getting there we go I must have clicked somewhere completely different. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the E1000. And remember, we've got version 2.1 on this one here. So we want to see if that one is uh, is uh, available. And it does look like it is. Version 2.1 is supported. So we want to see when, when, when was the last time there was an update for this particular device. And it looks like the last update on this was November 2020, which is pretty recent considering that the manufacturer was back in 2014. Um, so yes, this one has a great, uh, th this would be a great opportunity to revive this old router, this uh, seven year old router um, into something that's a little bit more uh, modernized and supported by the, by the community. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a link in the video here somewhere once the once I have the video, but I'm gonna show you guys how to how I flash this particular this drive or sorry this router, um, in that way you know how to do it in your uh, yourself. But there is a tutorial to do it. So in this case here, I think that I overall I made a good purchasing decision um, by picking up this particular device. Um, yes, the manufacturer no longer supports it, but what I can do with this device now is that I can set it up to where it um, extends the current Wi-Fi access I have in my home lab um, to other parts of the house um, that doesn't get a good reception, and that's kind of the focus of the next video that I will have for something like this. So um, just a quick recap, always check uh, before you make a, a major purchasing decision on uh, electronics, uh, use electronics, make sure that you Google it. Um, usually just put in the manufacturer and the model number in there and just kind of get a gauge of where everyone is selling it. And then try to try to get a good deal from that point on. The second thing that you probably would want to do is just to make sure that it's still being supported by the manufacturer. Um, the device is not going to be as good if this if the manufacturer no longer supports security updates for it. So uh, if you felt like this video was helpful for you, please uh, go ahead and like and comment on the video. Hit that subscribe button. We'll greatly appreciate it. Uh, Y'all know the drill. Keep it real.